But today, cities as organisms make sense to us as we now have a deeper understanding of the natural world, as well as statistics and data to better understand cities at a macroscopic level. All that said, it's hard to find detailed, actionable recommendations inside the city as organism metaphor. There are some about sustainability, sure, but these scaling laws can suggest that the destiny of a city is preordained, not something that city planners want to hear. But I want to go on record and say that there are some city as blank metaphors that can be useful to city planning. For example, did you know that cities can be considered crystals, liquids, or gases, at least in terms of the urban heat island effect? Rigidly gridded cities that resemble the atomic structure of crystals are more likely to trap heat and make the city hotter relative to rural areas, while chaotically organized cities like Paris or Boston that resemble the molecular organization of gases tend to keep cooler. This kind of information, described as a metaphor, can help inform the design and layout of street grids that can help keep cities cooler. This can mean people using less energy on air conditioning, a positive change for the climate. So while I find some of the city as organism research interesting, it's probably not going to make an impact on my work or the design of cities. But we've been comparing cities to other things for a really long time, and we're probably going to keep doing it. Cities are just so complex and fascinating that we can't help but try to understand them by using something else as a reference point. But to me, cities will always just be cities.